Okay, so I need to know what is going too far when it comes to an expired Bumble match. Uh, I matched with uh, this super hot guy about like a week ago on Bumble. And I'm not kidding you when I say that he was the most handsome guy I've seen in my life. And I've had that uh, kind of feeling like three times in my life. It's not something like, I always crush on guys, but this time I was like, yes, we are like, yes, 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 yes to everything. Uh, even his personality seemed to be like amazing. So I really, really, really wanted to meet him. I text him on Bumble and then, you know, they have like 24 hours to respond or something, but he didn't link his Instagram. So I had no way of contacting him if the match expired. So I thought, okay, I need to know his Instagram. So I thought, mm, that kind of guy would like a really cool bar. And there's this really cool speakeasy that I know in Tokyo. Uh, so I went to that bar's Instagram and I looked into their followers. And I found him by just typing his first name. Bingo, I found his Instagram. And I have this other account to like kind of like stalk people basically. And um, like a secret account. And I log into my secret account and I looked at his story and i see that he's on a plane going out of the country so i'm thinking oh shit like he's not gonna see my match because he's in the plane right now and then of course the match expired uh so i thought what should i do should i just like add him with my real instagram uh and then just text him because like that kind of looks creepy because how would i know his instagram but i didn't anyway because i was like you know what it's gonna it's gonna come off endearing and like i'm confident so i just follow him on my main instagram and then i text him like hey um i thought like our match expired on bumble but i thought you were like super cute so i'm texting you on here because it's a shame like we miss each other um of course he never saw the message he never um replied so i was thinking okay well you know what there's no way he would not reply to me probably he my dm went into you know the request thing and he probably didn't even see it because he probably has lots of dm because he has so many followers you know complete denial so i thought okay i need to know more about this guy so i go to his tagged pictures and i uh realized that basically a few of his friends are friends with one of my friends so it's not like a direct connection so i asked my friend who has uh mutuals with him like do you know this guy and she's like no i don't but you know what i'm just gonna uh text my friend who is friends with him and let's find out if he's single if he's like a great guy or if he's a douche so she texts him and she's like um he's like her ex coworker, and she goes oh yeah i spent all summer with him but he never mentioned bumble i don't even know if he's still on the app but now he's gone to this country for three weeks he's gonna come back um in three weeks and that's probably why he hasn't responded to her because he's just waiting to be back in japan and uh she's like oh but I, like let's let's meet that girl like she sounds fun and now I'm thinking this this has become way too fucked up. Like I'm going to be meeting his friend through my other friend and I'm getting, you know, one step closer to him, but I can't stop feeling like a fucking stalker. Finally, uh Thursday night, I was in a bar and um I meet all these cute guys. One of them I add on Instagram, we follow each other, and turns out he is friends with that guy or at least like they follow each other on instagram so finally i have one mutual with him which brings me a little bit closer which is insane and i'm thinking like if i was an ugly gross dude everything that i did up to this point would be considered creepy and like that guy would have probably gone to the police but just because i'm a cute girl i'm thinking i might still have a chance but no i need to stop I need to quit this. I need to stop this. I figured I would tell this dating story while my makeup is still on. But y'all, this is the best one. Well, <laughs> it's time. If you're an OG follower from my first original page, then you guys will remember this story because I got on live leaving his house. So this is the guy that took me to California Pizza Kitchen and didn't order anything on the first date, right? I wasn't upset because he knows I love butter cakes or so whatever. Also, he was a little musty because he had just come from the gym. I don't understand why he didn't take a shower or change the clothes. Anyway, he had come to my house before and this was 
was like our second date. So I was like, all right, whatever. It's time to go to his house. So he invited me over to his house one night and I was doing my blowout, my silk press. And he was rushing me through the silk press. So I was considering not even doing my baby hair. I get there. He don't like the way I parked. I got to repark three times. And then finally he goes, let me do it for you. So then we go inside. He's cooking sweet potatoes, by the way. He's like, these are my favorite thing to cook is roasted sweet potatoes. I look at them sweet potatoes, half of them burnt because he didn't chop them up in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. So he didn't learn to cut symmetrically from Gordon Ramsay or his mother, but that's neither here nor there. Also, he had two roommates, two. So that means three people in a two bedroom house. You 34 years old and you're a structural engineer. Why you got two roommates? They had a sheet separating the bedroom so he have his mattress on the floor with an air airplane blanket on a mattress and then on the other side is his friend's room room let's go back to the food for a second because he was eating this really large bowl of salad and he had it underneath his arm like a football and was eating it like this and it was really strong smell of vinaigrette and he kept asking me to kiss him and i was like nah man i'm not about to kiss you while you're eating a salad and he was like really forceful about it and i was like no fam he goes i want to watch a movie with you i'm like okay but i'm looking around ain't no tv how y'all us three people and nobody got a tv okay so he goes let me go and get my dell computer he opened up the dell computer this is the part that everybody remembers he has like a million icons all over his home screen and i'm immediately stressed out i'm like bro just close the dell he's opening the internet browser and he's like i think it's a little too late to ask my brother for his netflix password so he looks at me like bitch you gonna give me your netflix password i'm looking at him like oh no you got me fucked up so he turns on a free Amazon movie, y'all. It was like a Roman movie and I wasn't feeling it. I'm like, can we at least pay for a movie? He paid $3 for uh, the Taraji P. Henson movie where she can hear men's thoughts. So I'm on the mattress with the airplane blanket on the floor on his side of the room watching this Taraji P. Henson movie with the Dell computer and his phone goes off because it's his bedtime. So he kicks me out. This is the story time of the worst date that I've been on in my entire life. Let's call this guy... Edwin because that was his name. So Edwin and I had been on only two dates and we were talking for like less than like three weeks. He was a really nice guy like after our first date it was my birthday a week later and he gave me like champagne and roses just like randomly dropped them off at my apartment so I was like he's a vibe. So Edwin and I are planning our third date and he's like oh it's your turn to pamper me immediately i'm like what the fuck he's like this date's on you like you're gonna plan it you're gonna pay for it you're gonna do everything and i'm like because ah, ah, ah. i'd assume that's a fucking joke so i keep saying to him i'm like you're so funny you're so funny but i go ahead and i like book the date i just book when i'm like my favorite sushi spots and i'm like that's so he's like not gonna make me pay that'd be absolutely insane Listen, I would not mind paying for a date if I was in a relationship with somebody. Not when I'm going on the third fucking date and you're supposed to impress me to try and get in my pants. So the whole week we're talking about this and he's like, can't wait for your treat. And now I'm starting to get fucking triggered because in my past relationships, I was like the breadwinner. So I always paid for fucking everything and I dated losers. So they expected me to pay for everything. So we get to the sushi restaurant. Everything's going great. And then they're like, oh, what do you guys want to drink? Like, the waiter's like, what do you guys want to drink? And he's like, ooh, I'm going to get something fancy because Livy's paying today. What? So then I'm like, okay, Livy, time to be vulnerable. Let him know about your past. So I let him know. I'm like, hey, like, just so you know, this is really um, triggering me because I was used in my past relationships because I was the breadwinner. So this is like super triggering for me. And if it, this is like a joke to you, it's really not funny. He's like, I'm not kidding. And I'm like, what? He's still kidding. So the bill comes. And he slides it my way. And he's like, here you go. Man, if you're watching, there is nothing that makes a woman drier in the entire world than you, like, literally sliding the bill towards her. Like, that's pathetic. But I say, fuck it. You know what? If I'm going to pay, I'm going to pay like a baller. So I pull out, like, hundreds. Go to part two. Earlier this year, I made a video explaining my worst date I had ever been on. And it's in my playlist of Danny's dating stories. But I thought... Let's just retell it for everybody who's new. This date happened last year and I was actually set up by his mom. And him and I talked over Instagram for probably a year before we met in person. It's kind of weird. But a key component to the story was that I was playing a gig and the mom was there and she had this beautiful, huge beach hat on. And I just thought, that is such a pretty hat. Then after my show, she came up to me and was like, hey, I have a son. I want you to be in the family. 
go on a date with him. So long story short, we set up a date. I didn't want anything too fancy, so we ended up just meeting up at this little cafe. Him and I are hanging out, we're getting to know each other, but I was kind of distracted the whole time. I noticed that there was this lady wearing this beautiful beach hat behind him. And I'm thinking to myself, where have I seen this hat? And keep in mind, it had been about a year since I had seen his mom. Yep, then it clicked. I'm thinking there is no way, there's no way that this 23 year old man has his mother right there. There's no way. So I asked him, hey, is, is that your mom sitting behind you by chance? And in all seriousness, he turns around and he goes, yeah, that's my mom. I brought her. Um, what? And then the mom turns around and she goes, hi, son. Hi, Danny. And you want to know what's going through my head? Abort! So I politely finished my food, ended up finishing the date with him and his mother, thanked him for paying for my meal, said goodbye to the mom, and I ran. I ran to my car so fast. But yeah, I have not talked to him, seen him, or his mother since then. So yeah, now I can say that I've been on a date with a guy and his mom.